Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name's Chris Badgett and I'm joined by a special guest, Nathan Tyler. He's got several products that we're going to talk about today. One of them is Simply Schedule Appointments, which rolled out recently to the public. Another one is called Staging Pilot. Another one is called WP Draw Attention. But let's start the conversation at Simply Schedule Appointments. You can find that at simplyscheduleappointments.com. Welcome to the show, Nathan. Did I, uh, did I say the URL correctly? You did, yeah. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, yeah, it is a little bit of a tongue twister if you try to say it real quickly. Actually, the first time I heard it, I instantly, I could always remember the name, which is a good thing when naming products. Like I knew, it, it, I, like, I, I do like the name. I know it's long, but it's, it's a good name. Um, why did you decide to build a scheduling tool for WordPress? Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm personally a user of Calendly uh, and have been for a couple of years and use it to schedule uh, client calls, uh, customer demos, um, you know, all sorts of things. And I really find it useful. And, you know, I wanted to uh, integrate it more tightly into my WordPress site. I wanted to do some um, closer integration with the site and I realized that there wasn't much out there and I started looking, there's a lot of different booking plugins, um, but none that really have the polish of like Calendly or Acuity. You know, there's great hosted options that are out there, but the WordPress options are just not terribly good. Um, and we thought that, you know, we could build something that is native and, you know, can customize and integrate with other parts of WordPress, you know, that understands, you know, WooCommerce or Lifter LMS or any other plugin you have installed. Um, so that's basically where the idea started. That's awesome. And the course creators and the membership site builders, the folks who tune into this show, um, they're experts, they're coaches, they're community builders. Um, that often comes with a need to schedule coaching calls and things of that nature. Um, like what, what kind of problems are, are you solving or, you know, what are the main benefits or features of simply schedule appointments? Yes. I mean, booking your time, um, is, uh, you know, a primary thing that you're doing when you're selling coaching and, and lessons. Um, but making sure that it integrates with the rest of your schedule, you know, a lot of people have unusual schedules or they want to make sure that they're automatically blocking out time. If they have something else on their calendar or you only want to have a couple of these types of calls per day, or you want to make sure that you have an hour before and after this type of appointment, uh, cause it always runs long or, um, it might lead to other things that you need to do right after the call. Uh, or you might want to set, av set availability and say, I only want to do these strategy calls. Um, you know, if I have a week of notice, but if you're this kind of client that's at this, uh, who's paid for this membership and you have an emergency, then I need to give you another calendar option that says, you know, book a time with me and they can book a 15 minute slot the same day. Um, so all of those different kinds of, Things are uh, things that I want to do in, in my business and, and, you know, course creators and coaches want to have that flexibility as well. Um, so that was one of the key things that we've really been focusing on is making sure that there's flexibility for all those different kinds of needs. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I know for me personally, something I used to struggle with when I started to get good at the internet or, or you know, became an internet entrepreneur type person um, working like globally was time zones, mm -hmm. uh, like dealing with time zones just manually and trying to set up a meeting with somebody somewhere, you know, and then there's the whole Arizona thing. It's, uh, it's painful. It's painful. Yes. Um, go it's ahead. It's painful to develop against too. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I, and that's, that's the other thing too, like developing a product around that. Um, for the uninitiated, sometimes when you hear something like I want an online course or I want a membership site, in theory, when you first hear that, it's conceptually, it sounds pretty simple. Just like, oh, I just need to, but, and I can see the same thing with scheduling. Like, oh, okay, well, I just want somebody to pick a time and, you know, and then it'll happen. But what happens is when you open up that onion or start peeling that onion, there's all these different layers. Is there anything else? You mentioned things like blackout times, some gaps before and after calls. I mean, these are all things people learn the hard way, like, you know, maybe this type of call often r runs over or under, or I realize I need to like, 
like for really intense coaching, I might need to go like take a 15 minute chill break before the next one starts. Well, what other case you, or, or like scenarios to simply schedule appointments look at? Yeah, I mean, so handling different time zones and virtual appointments um, is a big thing, but you might also have a physical uh, option, like physical in-person appointment, which then your limit is and constraints are not only just the times that are available on my calendar, but, you know, if, if you have driving time or you don't really know how far apart those, how far apart those appointments are going to be physically, so you might say that I only can have, like, one in-person appointment per day, like if you're going to be driving to somebody's location um, for a consultation or something. Um, so, I mean, there's all sorts of challenges around that. Yeah, that's awesome. I One of the, the things about technology is it opens up human capacity and just all that wasted time scheduling meetings when it can be automated, even the way that, um, you know, like I schedule podcast episodes like this, it's, I have a link, I send it to the person, they pick a time that works for them. And it, um, and there's like reminders and that includes the zoom link. So literally I'm saving myself so much time to focus on other things. And if you haven't, if you do any kind of, um, appointments or coaching, uh, and, and you haven't really, or you're new getting into it, the whole scheduling problem is a big one. So I'm really glad you you built a solution for that. Um, let's talk a little bit about staging pilot. What, that's another product that you make. Um, what problem does that one solve? Uh, so that, that is basically uh, built around uh, solving the hesitation or fear that everybody has before they hover their mouse over the update button in WordPress. Whenever you go to click update, you know, plugins or update WordPress core, there always, there's always that hesitation and worry if like, is this gonna break things or do I have time to deal with things if it does break? Or worse, like, will something really small break and I won't even notice until like, you know, a month later when a customer finally tells me that, you know, they're not able to pay me on my site or they're not able to schedule an appointment, for example. Um, so basically that's the, the problem we're trying to solve. Um, and the way we try to solve that is, uh, you know, we've, there's a lot of tools out there for, you know, uh, quickly updating WordPress, or you can just go in and update it. Um, you know, the best practice solution is like you're supposed to create a full isolated copy of the site, uh, you know, sync down the database, uh, that can take some time, then you're supposed to update the plugins there, then you're supposed to, you know, go through all the pages and do everything on your site that you should um, to make sure that it all still works. And then you should go do those updates, again, on your live site. Uh, and give it one more final check. Um, so that's the best practice that everybody should be doing, but it takes considerable time. And most people go with the cross my fingers and you know hope for the best method because uh, nobody has two or three hours to do that every single time. There's an update that shows up in WordPress, which happens like every night. Um, so uh, we designed our system to uh, behave as if you know, you're a human with all the time in the world to do all the best practices. Uh, and then we automated those steps. So staging pilot, um, you know, can go in uh, and every time there's an update available on your site, it does all those steps I just described. It creates an isolated safe place uh, that's an exact copy of your site. It uh, runs all the updates that are available and then it does visual tests before and after. So it actually takes screenshots of all the pages of your site. It'll do, you know, before and after and it'll examine every pixel and make sure that nothing has changed visually uh, and it'll alert you if it has. And then um, if it has like uh, plugins with core functionality, it can test those as well. So if you have WooCommerce installed, it can automatically uh, emulate all the things that you would do as a human in the browser. You can go to the products page, you can add the product to your cart, you can go through the checkout process and make sure that at each of those steps uh, it does everything it's supposed to do. If you have Lifter LMS installed by chance, you can uh, uh, go through and uh, Staging Pilot would automatically enroll you in a course, uh, go into that course, uh, take a quiz or go through a lesson, um, make sure that you can sign up um, as a new user, all the core things that you want to make sure that your customers can do and you worry about those things breaking. Um, Staging Pilot you know, does the visual 
comparison of everything, and then it goes through and makes sure everything is functionally working exactly as you expect it. Um, and then only after all of that diligent process, it does your updates on the live site. So if something breaks, you get a little warning and you get notified and you get a little test result that shows you exactly what broke and where and on what page um, so that you can look into it or contact a support team or contact your developer. Um, but if everything works, you know, you have the confidence of knowing you don't have to worry about updates anymore and uh, you know, everything is safely and uh, you know, well tested. So that was that a very long answer. <laughs> no, it's a, but it's a very interesting problem and it's, it's a very real issue in the, um, in the industry. And I just wanted to highlight for the course creator and membership site builder out there. Uh, one of the reasons people come to a tool like Lifter LMS is they want to own the platform. It is self-hosted um, versus like a hosted LMS where you pay monthly um, fees. You're basically renting and, you know, there's limited flexibility in terms of adding other tools or design options and, you know, other kinds of limitations, perhaps metered pricing around how many students you get charged more, the more students you have. There's all kinds of issues in the hosted learning management system, online course and membership site industry. But when you own the platform, self-hosted, that's where Lifter LMS lives. And then this, these amazing tools like WordPress make it accessible, possible for you to build a technologies, you know, a website, and, but also a web-based application, literally an online school um, without knowing how to write a single line of code is amazing. Um, but then, it's there's like a, something I noticed just watching people in my my own journey too is, you know, a lot of times people start out with like a, a shared cheap hosting account, and you know over time at some point they have one of these problems that uh, Nathan is talking about here about uh, you know that an update happened and things didn't go well, um, and then you know maybe then they get better hosting like something like. Uh, manage WordPress hosting with something like WP Engine. And then, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit more about how uh, staging pilot works. But when, when you own the platform, and it's also not just a marketing site, like it is the business, like you're, you know, you're making money through the website uh, with courses, memberships, potentially other products and things. It's really important to treat that asset with respect and have like, insurance policy and put tools in place that like protect the future <laughs> um, and and keep you current because technology evolves quickly and, and that rate of evolution is accelerating you know wordpress is there's new things coming left rail masters new things coming what other plugins you're using new products are rolling out so testing is um very important um but this is, this is not only is it see it's like testing for you. Uh, it's also taking away the, the, the need like, Oh, should I update or not? It's, it's doing it all. Um, so I, I, I just wanted to ask you, Nathan, if you could walk us through um, for the uninitiated, like let's say I have a site on a website on WP engine. When I add staging pilot, what can I expect? Uh, so you can expect that your site is always up to date and always working as, as expected uh, unless you hear otherwise. So, you know, instead of, you know, every day I log into my WordPress site and I see 50 updates available or 40 updates available, uh, you know, your expectations that you log in, you might see one or two, uh, but basically those are always getting updated. Um, so you don't have to think about the updates anymore unless you hear otherwise, which is, that's the baseline expectation that we want. Um, you know, it should be the same experience you have with your phone. You know, I don't update apps on my phone and carefully inspect the change logs of every app that I'm about to update and worry that my phone is not going to let me make phone calls uh, tomorrow. Um, we want people to have that same experience with WordPress. So kind of what you're talking about, people come to WordPress because of the freedom and control of the platform, but they inherit all this responsibility and problems that, you know, you don't necessarily have and we want, you know, the power of WordPress, but the kind of carefree, like, you know, these are problems that robots and technology should be solving. Like we shouldn't be, you know, worrying about reading change logs and uh, worrying about every single plugin update that becomes available. 
And if this, um, if it does do an update automatically and it recognizes like, oh, I'm, I'm having a problem or this, this page looks different now or I um, the quiz, is, I can't start, I can't uh, purchase a course. What would happen in that case? So uh, that actually all happens on the isolated testing environment. So all of that happens on the staging pilot platform and it wouldn't actually touch your live site. Um, we would detect that visual change or the fact that you couldn't uh, sign up as a new customer and, and register for a course. And then you would get an email that says, hey, Chris, uh, you know, we tried to update Jetpack uh, and WordPress core last night. And uh, now all of a sudden, you know, your about us page looks different. You know, it's 20% different than it is normally. And your, um, you know, your test failed uh, to register for a course. So click here and it would take you to a visual uh, page where you could see kind of a before and after and you can actually scrub back and forth and see exactly what changed on that page. And then the test results uh, for the like going through and registering for a course, we actually, there's multiple steps in that process. Like you go to the register page, you fill out the registration form, you click the button and each of those, we, we take a screenshot of each of those steps. You have a nice visual thing where you can swipe through step one, two, three, and you can see where it broke. Um, so it, it's good information for, uh, you know, if, if you have a developer or a support team um, that needs to look into it, it's also a great tool because you can just like, you know, you can see what happened, but you can also just link to it and say, you know, dear developer, go look at this test result. And that gives them the information they want and need uh, to see where the problem happened. And, um, you know, that's even one last step that you have to do um, is if something goes wrong, it's easy to articulate to somebody else what happened. Um, that, that's awesome. And course creators are one thing for sure across the board, which is extremely busy. They have to wear many hats. I talk about the five hats on almost every web episode on this podcast. Those hats are the expert, the community builder, the teacher, the technologist, and the entrepreneur. You know, you're very busy. So this is, a, this is something happening in, with the technology hat on. So if you have good hosting and you have staging pilot installed to give you that peace of mind and know that it's, it's, um, it's testing all the updates for you, and then either be prepared if you have the skills to like, look into any issues that might arise or that's when you just need to have somebody on your bench. Um, you need to know it like either the product, uh, technical support or your own freelance web developer. If you're a much larger organization, like just the developer in your company can be ready to roll. And that way that the, that whole technology responsibility is pretty much handled and you don't have to worry about it. You can focus on, the marketing of your course, the teaching of your students. You can, um, you can focus on your coaching calls that got scheduled through simply scheduled appointments <laughs> or uh, uh, you're just very, they're very busy. So, and this is one thing that, you know, provides a lot of security, but also a lot of efficiency. So I'm really glad you built that. And I'm also really grateful that you added some Lifter LMS specific tests in there. We really appreciate that. Um, and if, if anybody's interesting, this, interested in finding out more about Staging Pilot, head on over to stagingpilot.com. Is that the correct URL? Yep, that's it. Perfect. Um, I'm, I'm on the little chat bubble most of the time in the bottom right corner. So if you have any other questions, like I'm, I'm always on there and answer stuff too. That's awesome. Well, <clears throat> I have another surprise for the listener here. Nathan has like all these things that are relevant to course creators you know, coaches, people building websites. Uh, this other one is another product he has called Draw Attention. That's at wpdrawattention.com. It is a, um, it's like an image that can provide interactivity. So if we put our teacher hat on and our technology hat and we're like, oh, there's something here. What, what could I add to a, a lesson in my online course with this tool? Can you explain what um, draw attention does? Sure. Uh, yeah. So basically, um, if you want to create an interactive image where you can, uh, you know, as people mouse over it, uh, things kind of highlight different portions of the image and you could click on it for more information. Um, that's in a nutshell what, what draw attention does. Uh, you can use that for a variety of different applications. So 
as a teacher, um, you know, uh, we have a little demo on the site that has a picture of a guitar. If you were trying to teach the different parts of a guitar, for example, um, you know, you could draw, uh, you, the course creator and the admin could like create a little box around, uh, the fretboard and then, uh, put in a little description about it, maybe a detailed zoom in photo. Um, and then when you publish that on the front end, people, as they mouse over the fretboard, it will light up and then they can click on it, uh, or there's a number of different display options. Um, but then it would pop up more information and show that extra information that you want to put about in there. So people use it for infographics, for interactive learning, for, uh, if you're doing tutorials for like Photoshop, you could take a screenshot of the Photoshop toolbar and you could, you know, write more information about every single little, tool in there. So as they roll over something, then they get a whole bunch of extra contextual information. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you could use it for. Um, it's, it's really as creative as you want to get with it. Super cool. It sounds like something that, too, that people just need to go check out the website to see what all this, what this kind of, and just spur some creativity around what kind of interactive things you could add to your lessons. Cause it's not just about video, audio, text, and downloadable worksheets. This is like another tool in your stack that you could use for creating your actual course content. And that's at wpdrawattention.com. Now let's talk about Nathan, the, the WordPress product entrepreneur. Um, you have, what's your approach to business partners? Like, do you, you have business partners for any, for these or sometimes it's different or how does that work? Um, yeah. So, it's been different over the years. Uh, draw attention and simply schedule appointments. Um, I've partnered with Natalie Macleese. Um, she and I have like, known each other. Uh, we were co-organizers for WordCamp at uh, Los Angeles, and we got to know each other over time and uh, decided to work on Draw Attention. It was our first project together. Um, but, you know, uh, we just had really complementary skills. Uh, she's very front-end and design-oriented, and, uh, you know, I'm a much more like back-end developer, and so... Um, it's been, it was kind of a natural fit and that's been really beneficial. Um, I'm sure as you know, it's, it's great to have a, um, you know, a co-founder that you can, can work with and have a balance of skills and somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of that's, you know, invested the same way you are. So that's been super helpful. Um, uh, staging pilot, uh, you know, I have a little team around it, but it is, uh, that one's, you know, founded by me solely, um, which, you know, both, are interesting and fun and have different sets of challenges. Yeah. The reason I ask too, like when we talk about all the hats that people wear, um, sometimes partnership helps and can relieve pressure or, you know, have complementary skill sets. And what I find is like with uh, working with Thomas on the Lister LMS project, we have different skill sets and it doesn't always fit into, you know, like, the CTO role or the CEO role. It's just, we're just two human beings working on this project together. And we, you know, I'm not a developer. He's not a marketer, uh, but you know, we, we, we figure it out together and I just couldn't even imagine it wouldn't be possible. Uh, it would not have been possible doing it alone. Um, and I'm just encouraging you, the course creator out there, you've got all these hats, maybe consider partnering with somebody. I know one of the things you mentioned, Nathan is, uh, you're very busy. I mean, you have lots of, you have these products, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of development. Um, you're also doing marketing. You're, you're wearing many hats, so you don't, ha you don't have as much time as you want for marketing or whatever. Something's always busy on the tech side. Um, so what do you focus on? Like when you do marketing, what's the, what, with, uh, you know, your capacity issues, what, what do you focus on as a method of marketing? Yeah, so, um, so I think one of um, our strongest kind of uh, channels is, uh, you know, word of mouth and WordPress.org and, and, and all that kind of stems from the product. So, uh, you know, we always have a heavy focus on the product and the user experience. And uh, so some of that is uh, the developer in me finding a way to do more development and, you know, convince myself that it's marketing. Uh, but you know, that's kind of, that's always a focus. Um, I just, I just want to clarify for the listener. When you say .org, you're meaning like you have like free product entryway right. into your yeah. product. So you're using right. free product as your marketing, like as your main, you know, marketing. 
which we do at Lifter LMS too. We have a free product on the front end. Yeah, so I mean, there's always a, a core focus on the product. Um, and then, and from that, it, you know, in the limited time that we have set aside for marketing is, um, you know, we will do analysis on like, you know, what features are being used um, and like look to improve the product in ways that we see people, you know, either from support requests or um, from data that we have of what people are using, uh, improving the product in that way. And then I try to kind of uh, in my limited time, take the kind of 80, 20 approach is like, if I had, was just doing full-time marketing, what there's all these kind of, I could spend infinite time on any one of these different things, or I could like tweak my, you know, paid advertising, you know, to the nth degree. Um, but in a limited time, it really forces the constraint of like, what's the most efficient thing to do. So, you know, I take like five minutes and I go into all of my different analytics dashboards, um, you know, once a week, literally like five minutes and I set a timer and I just do you know, five minutes in Google analytics, five minutes in, um, you know, my different advertising dashboards. Um, and I have, uh, I use Asana for my project and personal management, but I have like a recurring tasks and I have links directly to the right dashboards with the right time frames and filters set. Um, and so I just spend five minutes on each one. And that gives me like a pretty good pulse on like the data. Um, and I try not to get too caught up in that because like, if you get like the numbers, numbers are so hard, like all these analytics tools, I mean, you have people on different devices and, you know, somebody shows up as a direct traffic, but they really came in through some other um, channel. I mean, we don't want to get into all this different marketing stuff, but the point is that some of these analytics can't be trusted entirely. So I try to spend a quick, five minutes on each of these to get a quick pulse. And then I really try to get into more um, qualitative metrics, you know, like, and that might be looking at support quests. So I, I might look at help scout for any uh, threads, which is our support tool, but any threads with customers that have gone back and forth more than five or six times, I'll look at all those for a week to see like, you know, where are we having like a disconnect or an issue? And those things aren't, you know, scalable. I can't look at a pie chart for those, but, often those are, I think are more informative, um, you know, like what is the customer having frustrations with or, um, you know, looking at any individual sessions. I also try to get on like one-on-one -on -one calls with customers if the opportunity presents itself um, just to kind of, you know, if there's somebody who's new and like highly engaged in the platform and I can look on staging pilot, I might highlight somebody who's signed up and put 10 sites on the platform in their first three days um, you know, I can just shoot them a message and say like, you know, Hey, could I talk to you? And then also if somebody's put no sites on after a few days, um, and even just scheduling those calls, um, it kind of feels counterintuitive because there's, there's already so little time to begin with, but doing like a 30 minute call with like one or two people every week, um, reveals just tons more about what I should be doing, like how they found us, you know, what marketing was working, what didn't speak to them actually using the product, what issues do we need to address? Um, you know, and, and I think that one-on-one -on -one approach also, you know, makes people more invested in the product too. So um, I guess that's how I approach the marketing in a limited time. That was literally a gold mine. And I just want to, for you, the listener out there, I just want to pull out some of the, the learnings in there that Nathan mentioned. And what he's saying, I mean, he's a software company, but this applies to online course and membership websites too. The first thing is he doesn't have much time. So the best marketing is a good product. He has a free front end. Like he has a way for people to do valuable things for free. He gets distribution through the WordPress ecosystem for his free product. So he's not solely by himself and in, in distributing the free product. Um, he has, he's set like capacity uh, you know, time limits for different marketing or analytics research activities. Um, cause just like development, you could just build features forever. You know, I mean, I'm off in like chat bot land right now, like trying to build useful, not annoying chat bots, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, being, having time, I, I, I could duplicate myself and then be completely just as busy. So I think having those capacity, um, things are really important. You mentioned one-on-ones. 
I actually have blocks on my calendar for what I call relationship sales, which includes like direct one-to-one time with customers and prospects that, um, it's just a part of marketing. Like we're not building in a vacuum, actually talking and listening to your customers or your students. He also uses Help Scout, which is the same thing I use for customer support. It's a great tool. It has some really nice analytical features built into it. And it's, it really comes into its own if it's more than just you providing support. So if you have uh, a team of people who help with sales and support, uh, even if it's just two people, but having that shared inbox totally changed our world as, 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 a, as a company. I couldn't imagine doing support without Help Scout. Um, and then <clears throat> what else did you say? Just the data-driven approach um, and analytics, but also realizing that you can get too wrapped up in analytics. It's an art and a science. Uh, there's this mythical unicorn of the perfect like metrics dashboard that Thomas and I one day maybe we'll get around to building to help us make the best data driven decisions. It's always a goal. It's always something people should be working on. But, uh, you know, analytics aren't always perfect and they don't always tell the truth, but it is important to take a data driven approach to things. Um, and the other and thing, with, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and even with like Help Scout, that just reminded me like they're, they have a bunch of metrics on like, uh, number of responses or whatever. And, you know, the, you might think, Oh, I, I want to have one and done every support thread, like one response and it's, it's done. Like that's, that's the signal of success. But like, um, you know, you should look for large fluctuations in, in your numbers and those metrics. But like one of the most valuable things for us is like the longer the threads go, like the deeper that customer relationship is like, you know, maybe we're just replying and, you know, giving them an extra little tip and they're replying and saying, thanks. And then we're replying and say, Oh, you know, how did you actually, you know, come to use that feature or whatever, like just the pure numbers that can get really hung up on like getting that number up or down on what you think is better. But like we could have a 20 chain like thread that's actually a super valuable customer experience and interaction. Uh, but on the dashboard, it looks really bad. So making sure you don't get like too hung up on that. Yeah. And there's also a concept of uh, vanity metrics like that don't necessarily matter. The classic example of that is overall traffic. It is an important number, but like it's not necessarily the most important number. And sometimes people just get really focused on hits to your website, but not what really matters maybe more is course completion rates and student success, which would, um, you know, which will create that word of mouth marketing, not so maybe you should focus on that more than like getting traffic off of Reddit or something like that. Right. Uh, awesome. Well, this is a, this is a great conversation. Um, it's really neat how you have these different tools that are, um, you know, that have applications in the course building and the membership community. Uh, for the listener out there, check out staging pilot at stagingpilot.com. Simply schedule appointments.com and wpdrawattention.com. And uh, we'll have some other, um, some links for all this on the, on the podcast and below the video to, to point you over to where all this stuff is. Nathan, um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for um, adding uh, lifter support into staging pilot. It's really cool. And um, yeah, is there anywhere else if people want to track you down or see what you're up to where they can connect with you on the internet? Uh, those are all good places. Uh, I'm on Twitter uh, and I won't try to say the handle, but we can put it in the description, uh, but you can always find me there. And like I said, on staging pilot, I'm, I'm on that live chat uh, quite a bit. So if you have questions about any of this, you can also find me there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. All right. Thanks for having me.